Hi guys, this is jsnl.com and I'm here with the review of the Huawei Nova 11 Pro. I feel like it's been yesterday since we last tested the Nova 10 Pro and now it's time for the successor. The Nova 10 Pro came in Europe in fall last year and now it's the summer and it's time for the Nova 11 Pro. Still a selfie phone with a cutout for a dual camera here with the same CPU as the predecessor and at the same time with a large OLED screen which is bright and ready for video watching. It could be a vlogging phone on account of the powerful main camera at the back and the two strong cameras up front with 4K video capture, autofocus, plus we also have some welcome extras like the 100 watt charging. Now I'm going to talk about the design first. Uh, it's really sad that I didn't get the green version, but the black version is also pretty cute. You can see here this print which reminds me of Guess or Gucci. Definitely fashionable, leather imitation and the phone is available in either black, green, white or gold. It's got glass at the front side, curved on the sides and uh, it's got echo leather at the back and the screen is protected by Kun Lun glass which has trickled down from flagships to mid-range devices. Um, now um, I have to say that uh, the grip is quite solid on account of the echo leather back side. The frame is most likely plastic here and uh, the phone is quite nice to look at. It does keep the golden ring from the predecessor and the measurements are just fine. 7.9 millimeters in thickness and 188 or 193 grams depending on the version you get. Either the one with the echo leather back or the one with the glass back. Okay, so the frame is actually plastic with a metal finish and the weight is very well balanced. I can't say it's uh, heavier at the top or at the bottom, it's just well balanced. By the way, we also have a bundle case, just so you know, and we have an impressive 91% screen to body ratio. The camera module does protrude a bit and it also draws some lints and dirt as you use it. The only drawback of the design is that there is no IP certification this time around. Now, as you can see, the screen here is pretty bright and crisp. We're dealing with an OLED, a large one, 6.78 inches and the resolution of 2652 over um, 1200 pixels. It shows 1 billion colors and has 120 Hz refresh rate, plus HDR10 and of course Kun Lun glass for protection. Now the actual viewing experience will be put to the test in a minute now uh, and I can show you this clip. Okay, so we're dealing here with a screen which has gentle curves which are uh, pretty similar to the predecessor. The actual screen here is similar to the predecessor. The image is bright and crisp. We got wide view angles. Vivid colors with a wide range of colors available and a good contrast, even the full sunlight. The pixels have a pentile matrix arrangement and the screen is quite impressive if you're going for uh, movie watching or series watching on the go. And uh, now let's actually see some measurements. So first of all, we achieved a very impressive 996 lux, which is the brightness, it's huge. It's actually the third place phone from the 500 we've tested all time. It beats the 802 lux of the Nova 10 Pro, it beats the Galaxy S22 and hundreds of other phones, including flagships. There are some settings here for the screen, which are actually, well, there's quite a few of them. We got the brightness, which can be set to automatic. You got your dark mode, your eye comfort, your ebook mode text size, sleep, color mode and temperature and we can also mess around with the screen resolution and screen refresh rate. Now going further from that uh, we have a CPU here which is most likely detailed and revealed by AIDA. It's a familiar CPU, Qualcomm Snapdragon 778G in the 4G version. It's a 6 nanometer chip octa-core with the Adreno 642 GPU. The same CPU as the predecessor Nova 10 Pro. In the current case it's accompanied by 8 gigs of RAM and also 256 gigabytes of storage. There's also a version with double that amount. Sadly, no micro SD and no nano memory slot. And uh, the games will run just fine here. I didn't notice any throttling or overheating. So yeah, there's that. The performance is handled quite well. And uh, we also hit a bunch of benchmarks. So let's see where those have pointed us. We start off with Antutu 9. As you can see, we're just above the Nova 10 Pro. We surpass Xiaomi 12 Lite, we surpass the Galaxy A54 and I should probably also mention that we surpass the Vivo X80 Lite if you want other comparison terms. We're below the Honor 70 and below the Motorola H30. Now when it comes to Geekbench, we can go to Geekbench 6 here and you can see that we're just above Galaxy A54 and A34 plus the Realme 11 Pro Plus, but uh, we're below in Geekbench 5 this time because we have more tests here. Uh, we are below uh, Motorola H40 and the Xiaomi 
11T. When it comes to gaming, there's 3D Mark, Slingshot Extreme ES 3.1, where the phone is just above Xiaomi 12 Lite, and the Galaxy A54 again. I keep comparing those here. Sadly, it's also below the Huawei Nova 9, which is a bit older, and below the Honor 70, plus below even the Nova 10 Pro predecessor. The results are, I would say, modest, typical for a 2021, 2022, 2023 mid-range handset. Now, when it comes to the temperature test, we can go here, tests, and we achieved 42.2 degrees Celsius when it came to benchmarks, which is a bit high, uh, but nothing we haven't seen before. So yes, in benchmarks it does get a bit hotter, but in games just 34.3 degrees Celsius after 15 minutes of gaming. Now, when it comes to the battery, you can once again go to IDA and uh, check it out. So we go here, battery, and it's a 4,500 mAh unit, which comes with 100 watt wired charging, which is always good news. You're supposed to achieve 50% charge in 15 minutes, which is actually excellent. And there's also reverse wired charging. The predecessor, by the way, had a similar battery, same capacity, same charge. Now, if you go to our website, you're going to see that we achieve an excellent result when it comes to video playback time, 19 hours and 17 minutes. It beats the Nova 10 Pro and it's uh, 15 hours. And at the same time, it beats the uh, selfie phone Vivo V10 E3 and the Galaxy A53. It's below the Motorola H30 and the Honor 70. When it comes to continuous usage in PC Mark and the likes, we achieved 9 hours and 10 minutes, which is, I would say, rather poor. I actually expected more, much more. It's above the Motorola H40 somehow and the Galaxy S21 Fan Edition. It's below the um, 10 hours and 12 minutes of the Nova 10 Pro predecessor and below the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus. The silver lining is the charging, definitely 22 minutes for a full charge is actually mind-blowing and after just 15 minutes you'll be all set with 67% charge. So yeah, the charging is the strong suit here. Now let's talk about the acoustics. Okay, so a bunch of ideas. Uh, it doesn't cover my speaking, so it, they're not very noisy. Uh, and I have to say that uh, they're decently balanced at first hearing. The bass is quite fine. The high notes are a bit modest. It's satisfying most in movies rather than music and also video games. So yeah, typical mid-range, nothing out of the ordinary. I would have wanted it to be louder for sure. Now, when it comes to the tests, we have them here. We can go to the uh, well, volume power test. When it comes to the acoustic sample test, we achieve 74.9 decibels at the top and 88.1 decibels at the bottom. It's a huge difference between the two. Definitely the bottom speaker is doing the heavy lifting. Well, the bottom one actually surpasses the Motorola H40 and the Galaxy A54 while being below the Realme 11 Pro Plus and the Huawei Nova 9. Sadly, when it comes to games, let's see what we achieved here. When it comes to games, we achieved a mere 84.6 decibels. It's at the bottom of our uh, 500 phones we've tested. So yeah, we usually require above 99 decibels. We managed to beat the likes of Realme C55, which is not exactly a compliment. Now it's time to discuss the cameras and uh, I think I'm going to do it on a lighter background so you can see the cutout for the camera. Reminiscent of the Huawei P40 Pro, this cutout includes a 60 megapixel ultra wide camera with 100 degrees and autofocus and an 8 megapixel portrait camera with 2x zoom and autofocus as well. It shoots 4K video. At the back side we have a triple camera with a 50 megapixel main sensor, f1.9 aperture, laser autofocus, 8 megapixel camera with autofocus as well, LED flash is placed here, dual LED, dual tone. 4K capture, and uh, yeah, I would say that's about it. So it's actually not a triple camera, but rather a dual camera, 50 megapixel and 8 megapixel, the third sensor being the laser focus. Now, uh, the camera UI includes functions for vlogging and filters and special focus stuff with a greater focus on video, I would say, rather than photo. But let's check out some shots. We have quite a few of them, 200 plus, and the ones that stand out are definitely the selfies, once again, this being a selfie phone. However, I was actually pretty impressed by the close-ups and the texture of the flowers we captured using this handset. The main sensor is actually quite solid when it comes to details and focusing. As you can see for yourself here, the texture of the flowers is pretty impressive. And the texture persists. You can see that in the buildings and um, the architecture I captured, all of them seem to have this texture. Now, you can definitely notice the difference here between the main camera shot and the ultra wide shot, which is a bit uh, whiter and has less details on account of the lower 8 megapixel resolution. Now, these are the selfies. I mean, at first sight, I would say they're nothing out of the ordinary and expected a bit more from the focusing, but the details are definitely there and there's a lot of clarity and texture to my head.
I don't exactly feel that the camera insists very much on focusing on me, even though it has autofocus, so yeah. I have quite a few shots here, and there is definitely, once again, texture and detail in these captures. Once again, a regular shot, and if you want to catch the full scenery, ultra-wide shot, with reduced details for the leaves in the sides, as it happens usually with 8 megapixel ultra-wide sensors. Once again, when it comes to flowers, this is definitely a solid package and also scenery. Okay, another batch of selfies, this time we're playing with effects. Now I feel that my uh, face has been cut and contoured pretty well from the background. Here we can also apply some filters. This is the cut from the background. I would say it's iPhone worthy, but the iPhone from a few years ago. We even play with the zoom, so level 1, level 2, 3 or 4x, which is actually quite decent for a non-telephoto phone, and this is probably 5x, once again decent for digital zoom. Okay, and uh, this is actually the aperture, not the bokeh feature, and I'm actually very impressed by it. I would be tempted to advise you to use aperture rather than bokeh for such needs. Once again, monuments. It's a pretty cool traveling phone, I'll give you that much, but be careful with the details of the ultra-wide camera. And of course, some food photos, which I would say are mind-blowing. I mean, I actually use the Xperia 1 Mark V in tandem with this phone, and this actually looks better when it comes to the food photos, so yeah. It's even Galaxy S23 level when it comes to just photographing your food. These are daytime shots, and I think that the phone has evolved in two aspects compared to the predecessor. I would say that one of them is the exposure, and the other one is focus when it comes to the main camera. The selfies are fine, but they're nothing out of the ordinary. At least we also have ultra-wide selfies to see the scenery behind us better. Now, when it comes to the nighttime shots, I would say that you should stick to night mode. That's the best aspect of them all. So this is a regular shot. Uh, it's not very crystallized when it comes to the vegetation here, but now you can actually tell between the leaves. Bunch of selfies, but if you're lacking the flash option, you should not take them. I mean, make the screen behave like a flash. That's what I mean. The street light halos are a bit big. They have crowns around them. And as you can see, these selfies are a bit better once you light up the screen. Okay. Uh, I would say it's a typical mid-range behavior, nothing out of the ordinary, unless you trigger the night mode. So yeah, zoom is uh, pretty underwhelming. These uh, street lights appear a bit bigger than expected, but the clarity is definitely there, and I'm actually impressed by the green vegetation and the way it's rendered without any sort of deformation. We have more shots here. It also captures quite a bit of light, I'll give it that much. There isn't one shot here which I would call dark. That's for sure. And check it out. This is this panel is too bright, but if you apply the night mode, you can actually see better what's on it. So stick to night mode and try to avoid the sceneries with light which is too bright. I would say that it doesn't it hasn't evolved very much from the Nova 10 Pro before it. So yeah. Okay, so these have been the photos. Let's talk about videos. Somehow, believe it or not, I'm actually more impressed by the uh, well video behavior of the phone compared to the photo behavior. We have 19 clips here, and uh, there are a few that stand out. So first of all, this one here, with the bee and the pollen, it's actually vlog worthy. Uh, try to focus on videos which would make it in a vlog. You can see the bee filled with pollen, excellent focus and detail. And then we have uh, this selfie video, which is actually a sort of a, let's say, stabilization test, walking around in the city of Bucharest, with a wide-angle camera, very wide, solid microphone, and a decent stabilization. Okay, and this is another good video. This is the portrait video, which is pretty close to the level of a flagship like the Galaxy S series one. I also tried the focus test. Fast focus alternation between the foreground and background. By the way, nice colors and fast focus. And we couldn't do without a stabilization test. Here we are. Ascending and descending stairs. Not bad. Overall, not bad. I'm actually more impressed by the video than the photos. Okay, and I also have an interesting clip here, a sort of a product focus or whatever the name is. This is actually the AI portrait thingy and 
I think this is it. It's a special mode in the camera where you can actually showcase objects and things, place them in front of your head and the focus will fall on them. And I noticed that it actually happens, it's not just a promise. And you can use that for product demos if you're a journalist, so that's quite fine. Okay, those have been daytime videos, the nighttime ones are a bit murky, darker, shakier. It's to be expected when we talk about mid-range, not flagship. However, the quantity of light is satisfying here and the colors aren't half bad. This one looks a bit better. Even the stabilization is decent, I would say, in this one. But once again, not much of a revolution from the Nova 10 Pro strictly in this regard. At least the lights are not exaggerated in any way. Okay, so this has been the section for the camera. We can also talk about the connectivity now. This is a limited 4G phone. It's not a 5G handset. It has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, GPS dual band, NFC and a an USB-C port at the bottom, USB-C 2.0 with OTG. The 4G limitation comes with the sanctions of the US for China and uh, well, yeah, that's about it. It's been going on from 2019. The calls are okay and we have a speed test here somewhere to show you what we achieved when it comes to Wi-Fi. Uh, we have 872 mega per second downloads and 785 mega per second uploads which are quite solid results. We'll be back with more 4G tests. Now we have reached the software area where the device runs on uh, Emotion UI 13 based on Android 12. As you can see we have this assistant aggregator area here with useful stuff like the news and so forth. We're using gesture navigation to get around and activate the multitasking and other things. We got the control panel here which is the quick settings area and super device to interconnect all the Huawei gear in your house plus notifications with a swipe from this side. Now, aside from that, there is a large degree of customization on account of the themes and uh, other options available here. We can also pinch the screen like this for wallpapers, also service widgets, and you can even do widget combos and overlap them for a stacked view, which is something new that came with Emotion UI 13. Of course, Huawei App Gallery is here. We don't have the Play Store, we don't have the Google services, but we do have a very populated App Store with 200k plus applications and a four-step verification process and uh, lots of useful apps including Uber ones and even Google ones. You can see me here using YouTube, Google search, photos, translate, maps, Gmail and Drive, which all of them help me do my usual tasks. Plus Uber is also available. So it's been evolving a lot. And at the same time, uh, we have uh, a fingerprint scanner, an optical one here for the sake of security. I'm using the face unlock because I trust the two front cameras. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it software-wise. The experience is very much as I left it on the Huawei P60 Pro. This is the connectivity area, sound and vibration, notification, biometrics, security here, security status with the app lock, password vault, file safe and find device. The digital balance and Huawei Assistant, which is pretty much, well, the famous Cilia. When everything's said and done, I think it's time for the verdict and we have the pros and cons. On the pro side, it's a cute looking phone, which is light and comfy. It has plenty of vlogging features and handles its uh, video capture in a pretty fine manner. It has one of the brightest screens on the market, has OK performance, Kunlun glass protection, and the picture exposure and color and focus have been improved from the predecessor. Selfie videos are excellent and the charging is very fast. On the con side, it's just a 4G phone with no micro SD, no IP certification, no wireless charging. Some of the features remain the same from the predecessor. I'm talking about the screen, the battery, and the CPU. The PC Mark test wasn't very impressive, and the price is pretty high. Plus, no optical image stabilization. The night mode pics aren't that impressive, and the ultra wide camera feels like a bit of a weak link. However, at the end of the day, this remains a pretty solid vlogging phone if you're willing to spend a buck more. Than expected so yeah that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to videos and vlogging and things like that and traveling you should be happy with it however you should probably bring a power bank if you want to do a lot of continuous usage so the front camera is the one that truly shines on this handset it's a selfie phone first and foremost and a vlogging phone a satisfying one at that however pricey so you should probably expect a price cut before you get it that's it from us goodbye